So I'm going to be speaking about mantra meditation today and about some of the research that I've been doing at Macquarie University. We know mantra as Sanskrit mantras in the yogic tradition, but there's actually a lot more traditions using mantra. So it's actually been used throughout the world and throughout history. And so we see even in Egypt, they have frescoes that depict choirs and they would chant to make sure the Nile would flood. So they actually thought the chanting was having an effect on their environment. In India, which mainly we're familiar with here, they would chant Vedic texts and that was to alter states of consciousness and also to enhance memorization of the texts. Here we have Jewish cantillation and that's also all over the world. And then Buddhist chanting, which most people are familiar with, also similar to a lot of the yogic practices. Down here uh, is the Navajo, which is the second largest Native American tribe. And they would chant to heal the sick, to prevent illness, and also to protect their community. And then we have in Mongolia, just down the right-hand side there, also they do that throat singing, which also using repetitive sound. And that's also practiced in Tibet, Greenland, North Canada, Japan. So it's really uh, everywhere. And here we have like a traditional mala that we might use in a yoga practice, in a Hindu tradition as well. Here we have a Buddhist mala. Here we have a Muslim mala, prayer beads, and a rosary. So it's really interesting to see, you can pass those around if you like, to see that all traditions are using this practice. More recently, in the modern world, we have this happening, which, you know, they may not be altering mundane states of awareness or doing a meditation practice for that matter, but it's interesting that people, when they want to be heard, when they want their team to win, when they want to make a change in the world, they're coming together and they're choosing to chant repetitive sounds. So it's pretty powerful. We're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about it as a meditation practice. So mantra meditation is considered a focused attention meditation. And we have the silent where we just mentally repeat to ourselves, or the vocal condition. I know within yoga we have the whisper as well, within science we don't yet. So what are some of the benefits of mantra meditation? So here we have someone that is probably not even mentally ill. It's probably just like any of us walking around. I should be doing something else. What's the purpose? What is the point? Why am I here? I am alone. <laughs> Where is love? Something is wrong with me. I can't do this. That's most of us most of the time. And then we have mantra, which can just come through and we can end up like that lovely picture on the right hand side. So I would argue that any sound would be better than this nonsense. But of course, with Sanskrit, we also have um, specific vibrations from nature, which science has a long way to go with that as well. So, Some of the science has found that mantra meditation has slowed breathing. This was a really interesting study actually because they compared two completely different traditions, two different mantras. So it was Om Mani Padme Hum, the Tibetan mantra, and also the Ave Maria. And they found it to slow breathing to exactly six respirations per minute. And that's known to have a very positive effect on cardiovascular functioning. So really interesting that maybe those mantras were even designed to have that effect on the body. Increased mindful attention. So not just attention, but actually that objective awareness. Decreased activation of the amygdala, which is related to fight or flight, and also emotional reactivity. So we want reduced activation in that area. And the decreased cortisol, this was a study that was actually just done with music. So it hadn't been done with chanting mantras yet. Yet. 
<laughs> so now I'm going to talk about some of the studies that we did. So there were two studies. Uh, the first one we looked at social connection measured with empathy and altruism. Uh, so how likely people are to help others. You know, there were questions, would you help someone in the street? Would you give up your seat on a bus? That kind of thing. Mood, we measured positive mood and negative mood. And attention, we gave them an attention task to do before and after chanting OM for 10 minutes. And in study two, we used exactly the same design, chanting of the OM with a recording I'll show you. And we looked at social connection, physiological stress and psychological stress. So um, to everyone's amusement, <laughs> I had people come to Macquarie University, spit into a tube <laughs> and chant then for 10 minutes and then spit into another tube. And we measured cortisol in the saliva. So we looked at um, how much, so that's related to stress, stress hormone. These are the groups that we had. So in the first study, we had inexperienced meditators versus experienced meditators. And we had them in either a silent chanting condition where they listened to the recording and they just repeated silently to themselves and a vocal chanting condition where they chanted together as a group. So the groups were about five to 10 people each. And there's the number of people in each of the groups. And in study two, we had 12 minutes of OM because cortisol takes a while to get into saliva. So uh, we had to sort of extend that a little bit. And we just had inexperienced meditators. So they came in, filled out a few forms. If they were in the second study, they had a little spit into a tube as well. And then they were just asked to sit either in a chair or on a cushion on the floor and to chant with this recording for 10 minutes. So I'll just play the recording for you. bad pulling us away from that but that was <laughs> sorry graphs are coming next <laughs> that, that was the recording so they had their eyes closed and either chanting with it together or listening uh, so this is what we found this is the first study and this is the difference in the scores I'm not going to show you all the results we don't have time but this is the altruism so this is how they were reporting to donate to charities give up their seat on a bus things like that and the difference in scores are here with the inexperienced meditators here and the experienced on the right. So what we found was the vocal chanting condition increased altruism more than the silent vocal condition, which we predicted because of that synchronous behaviour and also that maybe the inexperienced people may not have been doing the silent condition. They may have been thinking about their exams or whatever was up next. So the difference between the groups was the experienced meditators also had an increase in altruism in the silent condition. So they were able to um, basically become kinder people in 10 minutes. It's pretty amazing. So the second study we looked at, this is the physiological stress. So before chanting and after chanting this is the silent condition we've just got the inexperienced people in this study so this is a silent condition and the vocal condition and both decreased physiological stress so the cortisol decreased in both of the conditions then we looked at psychological stress so we used the um, the state trait anxiety inventory for this and this decreased as well. So their anxiety and stress self-reported decreased after the chanting in both of the conditions. And we also looked at altruism in this study as well to see if it would be similar. 
and altruism actually went up in both of the silent and the vocal conditions. And why should we care? Because this is why we do science, ultimately. So stress, uh, we know it's related to depression, anxiety, weak immune system, heart disease. We know that one in five Australians are stressed. And the conventional therapies are not always effective and there are often a lot of really terrible side effects. So if we can take chanting as a medication, then I think that could be quite a good thing. Altruism, we know obviously that the person that we're being altruistic towards is benefiting, but what about the person that is altruistic? And studies have found that they are actually healthier people as well. So they're mentally and physically healthier, they have a more positive mood, they have decreased symptoms of depression, decreased anxiety, and so everyone wins. The thing about also mantra meditation is that it's accessible to everyone. <laughs> and we can ask five-year-olds to participate in it and we can ask you know, elderly to participate, it's available. All languages can participate. With other meditation practices, you know, they can be obviously amazing, we all know that, but they can be difficult. Even for advanced yoga practitioners, if I said, okay, let's clear our mind of thoughts, everyone, you know, isn't that a nice idea? It's difficult. But mantra meditation is just so available and accessible to everyone. Just sit down and sing. It's quite simple and it's effective. So that's really all. There's a few people to thank and Bill Thompson, Vince Polito, who I did the research with. I'm so grateful. I thought I would be shut down straight away when I suggested to research chanting, but they were open to it. Dr. Shankadev Saraswati, who many of you may know, uh, he first introduced me to mantra meditation and I'm forever grateful. And Sri Shakti Amma, who is my teacher in India, who is also supporting me with the research. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you.